Hey, it's Dave. So for the past three months, I've been working on a language learning app, basically trying to create and develop a new language learning app that people can use to learn new languages quicker and better than existing solutions. And so in this video, I wanted to give a personal update on how this development process is going, what are the challenges, what's been done so far, what's the bigger picture and vision, and some thoughts on timeline. So I just made a long tweet about the status of this language learning app, wanted to go more in depth regarding this update. So the genesis of this is back in 2008, my wife and I started an app company and we saw a huge opportunity in the app store. We were looking for a great opportunity to start a business. We didn't have much software experience or design experience, but we felt the opportunity was so big that we had to try something. And so we launched our first app in the second half of 2008. Um, it did quite well and we were able to release some other apps. And for the first several years of the app store, we were just focused on improving this app. And we had a team of a few developers on board as well. And it was a great experience. It provided actually the capital for me to invest in, in other things, let's say Tesla or real estate. Um, but after several years, I, I would say lost interest, but my interest diverged where my wife and I had our first kid at the end of 2014, our second kid at the end of 2017. So we had two kids and I was really passionate on giving them the best, I wouldn't say formal education, because I'm not a big believer in necessarily institutional education of sending, I don't think sending kids and having them sit down, whatever, six, seven hours a day is necessarily the most optimal form of education. And so one of my passions has, have been, has been to take my kids to lots of places. And so the past three years, we've been doing a lot of RV travel four or five months out of the year. We're going to state parks and national parks and giving them this outdoor experience where they're exploring and having adventures or hiking, learning and seeing new things. And one of my ambitions were, was I wanted to give my kids these awe moments, these where they're just in shock over nature and the power of nature and the glory, the, the astounding kind of power of nature. I wanted to give as many of those type of experiences as possible because I feel like it's underrated, the relationship we have with the world and our surroundings. And I think it can really form our character and give us some deeper values that I think are hard to come by with modern society. So after about three years of RV domestic travel, I started to want to expand my kids' exposure and take them overseas. And so this year we're planning, hopefully, we'll see if everything comes together, but a long multi-month trip to, to, to a bunch of different countries. But Last year, I think it was around November or so, October, November, I started to take my kids to Mexico as a first step. And we took a few trips. And as my kids explored the different cities in Mexico, they really were fascinated by the different cultures and people and the different languages. And I was surprised. My One of my kids, my, my son, he really just wanted to learn Spanish on his own and he started to use an app and really get into it. And I was like using and watching him use this app. and. Over time, it just became frustrating because the app wasn't progressing fast enough and it wasn't helping him learn enough of the language. It's it just too slow. Um, and I came up with some ideas initially, mocked up some just pencil drawings of what I thought a better app could look like, at least exercise, like what's the core kind of functionality. That was about, I think, yeah, about a little over three months ago since those first drawings. And I came back to the U.S. and decided to prototype it out. And luckily, I already have my team. I have a few developers on hand. We have all of the pieces because our company actually is still in existence. It's still supporting our current apps out there. And so that's allowed me to quickly move on this idea where I'm like, okay, let's prototype this, whip up some designs, get it done within a week and start testing something out. And after a week or two and getting some initial kind of prototypes, it just started to become actually a much more difficult problem than I first anticipated. Learning a language, there's so many facets to how to acquire a language and there's so many challenges and it's not an easy process. And yeah, I started to really dive 
deeper into the theory of language learning and what is the best approach to acquiring language? How do people acquire languages? Why aren't people able to more easily and quickly acquire new languages? What's going on here? And after doing a lot of research, talking with people, I zoned in and honed in on this idea that we just don't have enough data. One example is with AI. So with AI, you've got these neural nets and you need to feed the neural nets data. And through data, they're able to basically, they have all of these nodes or neurons that is basically looking at this data through a different lens or a different angle. For example, one node is looking at the texture, one node is looking at the color, one node is looking at the quantity, the shape, etc. And our brain actually is like that. We're looking at the data, let's say of language that we hear and get and are exposed to through through just a multitude, just millions of neurons of angles, and our brain is processing that. But the problem is our brain needs a lot of data. It needs a lot of data from language to be able to really acquire that language. And I think there's a misunderstanding with language learning where people think, hey, here's a word, memorize it, right? But that's the thing. You don't really have enough context, enough data to really for your brain to naturally memorize this. So you try to force memorizing this word or phrase and it's such a pain and you forget it. You don't, it's just a struggling, a, a struggle, right? To learn language. So there's a, a, a small movement in language learning called comprehensible input. And it's basically this idea that, you know, you feed a person a lot of input data, whether it's reading or listening, et cetera, or seeing that is understandable, that they can understand in their target language, the language they want to learn. And as the brain starts to get exposed to all of that data that it can understand, it starts to process it and you start to naturally acquire the language, but you acquire it quicker than if you were to memorize. So it's actually an anti like memorization approach, right? It's actually the opposite of most all of the language learning approaches out there. It really resonated with me. I learned, I learned Spanish in mid, middle school and high school, but my, after high school, I tried to learn Korean, took some courses in college, did a study abroad program, and then ended up doing graduate school in Korea. And it was a long journey to learn a second language. I always thought that I learned it like slowly, I always thought I wasn't good at languages, but recently I found out that mostly the US government has this rankings of the most difficult languages to learn as an English speaker. And yeah, Korean and Japanese and Arabic, they're up there. They're at the most difficult languages. It's just on, on so many levels. And I resonate with that. And as I learned and became fluent in another language, it, yeah, the, this question mark of how to do it and I really resonated with this comprehensible input approach. And I really started to see the memorization approach that most language systems are built on or learning systems is, I think is flawed. I think it's inherently limited and I think it's the wrong path for people to take. The problem is with comprehensible input, there isn't a like really great apps or tools. You have flashcards, you have some websites and some apps, but they're not really, I think the killer solution. I can't find something for my kids, right? Where they're put in front of something and they love it and they're just acquiring right language super fast. And that's important to me. Like I want my kids to be able to learn something really quick, optimally, and I want them to enjoy it too. So that's the genesis of where this interest came up, up came from. And then Right around this time, OpenAI opened up ChatGPT. I think this was probably, you know, what, beginning of December, so I'm not cl exactly clear on the exact timing, but around that time, ChatGPT opened up and it started to, the dots start to connect. It's, oh, it's like AI can actually help immensely in this language learning process, but the question is how? And so the, the idea that a lot of people have, is, oh, just stick, a chatbot like ChatGPT and tell it to teach you language and then magically it'll converse with you and you'll learn the language. But that's not how it works because language learning is so difficult. It's like AI hasn't figured it out. It doesn't know the best way and it's complex, right? It's not a simple task like giving a factual, like how many gallons are in some lake or how tall is some mountain, etc. It's There's more nuance and it's a much more complicated problem to solve. 
But I started to see that AI could provide a lot of pieces and can actually radically just transform how someone learns the language. And it could do so through a lot of ways, through creating right, the lessons, through creating the different sentences or vocab, to creating the pictures and the assets together with the lessons, to creating like the sequence of lessons and a ton of a whole host of other things that AI can be involved with. And so it's this interesting thing where it's like, what would take a huge legion of people just 20 years ago to create, let's say, a massive language learning program for many languages now can be created with AI, at least the content itself, or mostly. And that's the other thing is working on this language app, I've been and using open AI's APIs and ChatGPT on a daily basis. I see two things. One is I'm constantly surprised at the power of AI, like how well it could do certain things. But on the flip side, I'm constantly disappointed by some of the mistakes that AI makes. And it's such a frustrating thing because it does so well on some things and other things, it just is so far off. And I've come to, to accept that as that's the opportunity where, yeah, some people think, oh, we're going to have AGI just right away. But I think it's a little further off in a sense that I think the deficiencies of these large language models are there are some inherent ones and they're going to take a while to solve. And that's actually an opportunity for people to come in and to create products that actually cover and do better than, than these large language models on their own, because they're adding something on top of it, right? To cover the deficiencies and to enhance the strengths. And I think learning is an interesting and education is an interesting field because it's so complex. AI hasn't figured it all out and it's going to be a while. And there's a time where yeah, companies come in and provide value by pulling together a comprehensive experience that's better than just a pure AI experience at this, at the at least at this time. Um, so anyways, yeah. So one of the things was ChatGPT coming into the picture and changing the game on what AI could do. And we ha also have mobile has been here and it's now a mature platform where you've got great mobile experiences. You have native text to speech capability, also native speech recognition capability. You've got just translation service abound like everywhere. And so there's a lot of technologies that are all out there to bring together. Um, so for the past three months, we've been, I've been pushing this project forward and I'm keeping a very small team, just one or two other people. And we're trying to redefine how language can be learned. Can it be learned quicker? And that's the thing. Can it be learned in a way that's 10 X better than the current approaches and solutions out there, um, or current apps out there. And I think it can be, and that's the crux of the problem that I'm trying to solve. And I think it has bigger context or bigger motivations as well in American or English speaking countries. I think we take language for granted that we can search the internet. We can search for tools like our Adobe Photoshop, our, our coding programs are all this stuff is in English and we're able to access books and knowledge and courses and, and institutions with our language. However, that's not the case for a lot of people in the world. For a lot of people in the world who are cut off, let's say fr from economic opportunity, they come from, let's say the poorest countries in the world, they don't have the right education system. They don't have the right economic kind of infrastructure. And some of these places around the world, it's a completely different story. And what English can do and what English has done right over the past decades, it opens up a whole new world of opportunity for people with knowledge, with learning, with opportunities, with work, with culture, etc. And it's been, I think one of the biggest kind of enablers of people to find economic opportunity is learning language. And I think this opportunity is going to be increasingly important as we combine that with a growing internet access that's available to people, not just cellular, but let's say Starlink and others, you combine that. Plus you have the world coming together with social media. So you get more inspiration and so ro more role models and you combine all this stuff and you have the opportunity, I think for the biggest revolution to happen in the most poorest kind of countries and the poorest class of people in the world. I think this is an exciting opportunity and education is going to play a huge part. I think learning English is going to play a huge part. The internet is going to play a huge part. And, and this is exciting stuff for me, but it also intersects where a lot of people 
in developed countries um, need to learn English or other languages too. And it's a huge market as well, meaning that if it was only, let's say, the poorest of the world that needed to learn a language, then it's basically a nonprofit right? organization. It's like, where are you going to make money? But if the problem also exists with people who have resources and who are willing to pay, then it actually becomes a business opportunity. But it's actually both, meaning you can actually make a business where it solves the problem for people who can pay, but you can also solve the problem for people who can't pay and be cognizant of that and allow the access to your app and your teaching and your whole system in a way where, yeah, it's democratized. And it's a, I think it's a, di it's a difficult uh, line to, to walk and it requires a much more, I guess, developed kind of way of thinking in order to do it right. I think it's much easier just to do one or the other. Say, hey, this is a for-profit thing. We're going to sell a product, et cetera, or to do this other thing. Say, hey, it's a nonprofit, just give away resources. I think to do both, it's much more ambitious, complicated and challenging and but it's something that i'm passionate about I, I i understand both angles understand the business side i understand the need side and that's very close to my heart and so it, it just matches with all this so let me go through actually a few of the points i made on this twitter thread just to dive it a bit deeper into this when i say that we're making good progress on this app language learning app we're developing our and it's a very challenging problem to solve. So here's a few ways it'll be unique. Number one, focus on comprehensible input. I shared a bit about that, how memorization just boxes you in into too, too limited amount of words and sentences where your brain needs, uh, I think, 10x, 100x, or even 1,000x what a lot of these language learning programs are giving. Yeah, feed the data to our biological neural nets, and you're going to get right the language acquired by your brain. Your brain works all the time. I think we're missing out on, on, on that power of the brain here. Um, number two is AI generate contact I, content. I talked about that already where, yeah, I think we're into an age where, yeah, you could do some amazing things with what AI can do so far in what we're developing. Pretty much all of the content is coming from AI. We're having to look over it and make sure and curate the content, but the content itself is AI generated mostly. Free, I, yeah, I want to make the app free so that those without resources can learn English and other languages. In the future, we'll probably have some premium paid features, but I don't want those paid features to, to block off people from using the main features of the app. And so hopefully this app will be good enough. The free app will be better than anything out there. Hopefully that's the idea to become fluent in your target language. Fourth thing unique is my kids. And so I have this thing where I think my kids are an asset to me where I'm giving them daily, I won't say homework, but I pose to them the design challenges of the app. I go, Hey, we have a problem here, or the app isn't compelling in this way or this way. And they help a lot. Actually, it's actually quite interesting how much they're able to help. And as a result, I'd rather err on making it more interesting to kids in the beginning, because I think if you could do that, um, hold the attention of a kid. I think you've got something you can always like change it later, but yeah, it's going to be focused. I think initially really on making it really compelling for, that even a kid would love to be on the app for a, quite a while. Fifth is game dynamics. And I think a lot of uh, learning apps, education apps are a bit, I don't know, too didactic or too lecturish, too homeworkish, expecting you to memorize all this stuff. I like it more. I want to experience as more fun and passive, less stressful, something that also that's like a game that I think game dynamics have been proved, proven out. People like achieving and collecting and progressing and new levels and all this stuff. And I think, yeah, we can add that stuff to make learning better and more fun. Number six, unique thing is a small team. Yeah. Per I'm purposely keeping it really small and yeah, basically I'm the one who's pushing forward all the design decisions, the lesson content, the system, the game dynamics, mostly yeah, I have one developer who's coding. I've got a couple others who are helping more unlimited on a limited basis, uh, but yeah, it's a super small team and I, I've been tempted to hire more, but I want to actually be put in a position where we're forced to rely on AI more than, than on people right now, because I feel like if anything, yeah, it, AI is the thing that's changing the most and the app needs to leverage that. A seventh timeline is 
I'm not sure when we'll start accepting beta testing. I don't even know how we're going to test actually. And, but, and the reason is I want the app to be good first. I want it to be like compelling where I think it's like, Hey, this really is something amazing. And after we get that, then we'll decide on testing. I don't know. I don't know if opening up just to general beta testing kind of scenario is the right way. We might do something more targeted. We might just hit a locale, do it more local, face-to-face, -face, physical, maybe go to another country and try it out. Maybe people undecided. Lastly is the vision. I shared a little bit about this, that yeah, it could revolutionize the lives of millions. We'll gain, especially the poorest in the world, will gain access to a world of knowledge, tools, and opportunities. Yeah. The other thing is uh, on this vision is education is, it's a, it's really a multi-decade challenge where we're not going to solve education like in, in five years, even AI. Yes, it grows, but in five years, AI is not going to solve education. I don't know, 10 years. I don't know. Education is one of those things where it's not just education as we think of it in terms of learning some textbook thing, or, because we'll have AI basically to, to just to, to be able to to go to things and it'll get more accurate and reliable. But it's, for example, the task or the challenge is how do humans learn things or learn new skills? Like language is a skill. Let's say martial arts is a skill or sports or music or art or different things. And these things I think are endearing, even with AI becoming mature and let's say reaching AGI potential, whatever, I think humans will always have this innate desire and this passion to learn new skills, right? You want to basically and if there's something empowering about skills, right? When you learn how to play the piano and sing, it's empowering. When you learn the guitar, when you learn, you know, how to design something, when you learn how to speak another language, when you learn, it, it opens up worlds of opportunity. Um, and that's exciting. And I think it's going to remain exciting even with AI. So I think it's one of those cool areas where it's going to be AI plus education, right? Meaning it's going to empower education and it's going to lead to new forms of people, of ways that people learn new things and pick up new skills. And that's why I think it's a multi-decade area. And it's an interesting thing, I think, to start. It's one of the reasons why I'm actually getting my kids involved super early. They're ages five and eight. But yeah, I think this is multi-decade, meaning if you get them thinking about the problems right now, yeah, they're going to be experts on education, teaching people skills, and knowing what AI can do and not do, et cetera. Anyways, I hope this update has been interesting and informative. That's all I have for now. I don't have anything like to offer per se regarding this app. I don't have any beta test or wait list or anything like that. And it's still not at the point where it's finished in a sense where I've got this super compelling full product. We've got more and more of the pieces and I'm starting to feel like, yeah, we're getting to the place where this is really interesting and we've got some core exercises, the less some core lessons and approaches that really, I think really are interesting and, um, and potentially super effective. And that's where we're at. Hopefully we'll see in terms of timeline, I'll leave it open-ended for now, but just wanted to share this update and yeah, hope everyone's doing well. Bye.